All right. So uh, today I'm uh, speaking about uh, concurrency and uh, parallel programming in Java. Uh, how many people work in Java? <laughs> so many people. Oh. <laughs> now I'm nervous. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll start off. Um, Okay, thanks. So this is, uh, I'll just talk about these uh, things in uh, brief and then I'll show a demo. So uh, I don't have, uh, you know, any uh, Eclipse or any ID on my system on this, this is a new system. So I'll just show you the code. I can just, uh, you know, explain it and I'm sure everybody will understand. All right, uh, so what do you, what is concurrency? And uh, like, I mean, everybody knows, so maybe people will uh, ask the audience itself. Uh, anybody? Concurrency? So everybody is, uh, uh, this is the last uh, uh, talk. I know it's, uh, everybody's waiting to go. I thought it'll be more interactive, fine. So concurrency is basically, uh, according to the dictionary, what does it say, uh, English dictionary? It says that, it's uh, two or more uh, events that are happening at the same time. So that's what is uh, defined by concurrency. So in terms of uh, computer science, what does uh, concurrency mean? So concurrency is uh, uh, execution of uh, tasks uh, at an overlapping time period. Um, so that means it's, uh, you know, like for example, if uh, there's, a, uh, there's a person who's, uh, you know, vending tickets and uh, you have two queues, uh, like, two lines of people, uh, you know, waiting for their uh, tickets. So then uh, he can, uh, you know, parallelly give, uh, um, to, you know, uh, give tickets to both the lines. Uh, you know, as, as he's going on, uh, uh, like printing it, he can, uh, he can take the details of the next person. Uh, so as the printing is happening. So, um, so this is what uh, concurrency means. It's, it's basically that uh, uh, you're multitasking, basically. Well, in uh, parallelism, uh, uh, it's more like uh, where uh, it's, it's not like the pseudo uh, parallelism that's in uh, concurrency. It's more like separate uh, processors are there and you have uh, uh, each processor that picks up uh, one task and simultaneously executes uh, those tasks. Uh, so according to the dictionary, uh, parallel, parallelism or parallel is occurring at the same time or side by side. So here we have two vending machines and both of them are uh, picking up the tasks uh, side by side. So at the same time. Uh, so then, um, how does uh, the uh, CPU support concurrency? So um, we know that uh, um, in the CPU there are like uh, uh, a single core or a multi-core application. And uh, in a single core application, um, that's where uh, parallelism is, uh, is, uh, is achieved through uh, multitasking or uh, uh, where each thread uh, will uh, uh, pick up one uh, particular task and it will overlap over the same time period. So uh, um, in, in case of uh, multi-threaded applications, uh, uh, the, the CPU, uh, it shares uh, with the, th the thread share the same, uh, uh, the translation buffers, CPUs, uh, caches, and uh, the computing uh, units. Um, so all this uh, is shared between uh, the threads. All right, so, uh, so like I said, um, uh, multi-threading is where uh, the CPU uh, will, uh, the threads share certain uh, resources, like the cache and the translation buffer. That's where it, uh, the translation buffer where it stores uh, um, uh, the, uh, the memory for uh, between, uh, between the actual file system. It, it has a cache where it can store this uh, before it actually hits the file system. Uh, so there is also call, something called uh, multiprocessing. Multiprocessing differs from multithreading where it's uh, basically uh, you have uh, multiple cores and each core will have one application running on it. So uh, now the advent of uh, you know, multiple cores, um, CPUs, uh, this is how it does it. Uh, so multiprocessing and multithreading uh, uh, both uh, co can coexist and they both complement each other. Um, so then, uh, how does it actually work? 
uh, at the CPU. So uh, the CPU has, uh, um, it, it executes uh, the, any uh, task or uh, application in something called clock cycles. And uh, it has an internal clock that, uh, um, and at each tick it will, uh, uh, it, that's how it, uh, it, um, it identifies a compute cycle. And uh, so when you say like to 2,000 gigahertz that you listen to, well, what does it mean like 2,000 gigahertz? 2,000 gigahertz is actually 2 billion uh, cycles that is executed per second. Um, so that's the speed. And uh, so at that speed, uh, it can pick up and execute those tasks. So, uh, and also um, um, when, when any task is picked up, it'll, uh, it can be preempted, like uh, if it needs to wait for a resource, it can be, uh, it can wait on it and then it can, uh, the other thread can be uh, preempted and it can start execution. So this is how uh, multi-threading happens. Uh, one thread is executing, then the other thread, uh, if, it's, if it's waiting on some resource, uh, then the thread two will start execution. And then once the thread one gets its resource back, it will continue execution. Uh, so then uh, now I'll talk about the, on uh, Java language specification in SC8, uh, what are the uh, different constructs that are available. And uh, so I'll start with the basics, uh, what is already existing, um, and, uh, and all the new, uh, you know, constructs that have been added. So, uh, so you, um, let's, so we have uh, uh, in uh, in Java we have uh, like different uh, you know notify wait and notify all and uh, so I mean why do we need to worry about uh, uh, you know trying to make uh, it synchronized or why do we have those keywords um, so it should just be uh, available for us uh, why doesn't Java actually give it to us uh, directly like just say parallel and then execute everything uh, you know without having to go to the uh, you know into nitty gritty. So this is because uh, when uh, uh, the JVM, it, uh, it picks up uh, your, uh, um, each of the lines of code and then the, the compiler can actually, uh, it does some optimization. So during that optimization, uh, it, will, uh, uh, it will make sure that uh, uh, each thread ex is, uh, code will be uh, in parallel, but it can, uh, those uh, lines of execution, the order of execution can change, but still it will be in isolation. So this is where it causes uh, uh, issues with the, you know, um, shared resources being uh, uh, not, uh, you know, um, executing as, as per how you want the code to uh, work. So uh, it does not prevent uh, deadlock or uh, it does not prevent any, it does not require you to detect deadlock. So the program has to take care of it using uh, uh, the constructs available. Uh, so that's why you have some higher level constructs uh, and uh, data structures that provide concurrency. So uh, in, uh, in Java, uh, everything is about objects and uh, objects has, uh, uh, um, each of the objects have lock and uh, these locks are uh, implemented using monitors. And uh, so at any point in time, um, only one uh, thread can have, a, uh, can have a lock on the monitor. And uh, it can, it, but uh, one thread can have uh, that lock multiple times. If it has a lock, it can again acquire the same lock multiple times. And if it, uh, uh, and then the same lock, uh, when it calls, uh, when it does the unlock, it just reverses the effect, uh, the effect and it just uh, decrements uh, the count. Uh, I'll show you that as well. And uh, the synchronized keyword, uh, it uh, internally uses uh, locks. And uh, if, you, uh, if, if you attempt to use uh, any, uh, you know, synchronized uh, keyword, uh, what it does is it, uh, provides, uh, it acquires the lock on the particular object uh, if you're using uh, uh, just synchronize without any keyword on that, on this, uh, it will, this is your uh, instance, current instance on which it will acquire. Um, or if it's a class uh, static uh, method, it will acquire it on that particular class, class object. Um, so, and once uh, the execution is completed, then um, the lock will, uh, you know, the lock will be released and it can be picked up by the next uh, thread that is waiting. Um, 
and also it can uh, if it's interrupted uh, you know if the if there's any interrupt that happens then um, the exception is raised and it will throw an exception and but it will uh, uh, the thread will still pick it up and uh, you can handle the exception and continue your uh, execution so uh, every object like it has uh, um, lock it also has something called a wait set and uh, wait set is a set of threads uh, uh, which are waiting on that particular uh, lock uh, or on that object so uh, these uh, um, these um, wait set it can be um, manipulated using the set uh, wait notify and notify all methods so uh, when you when you call wait what happens uh, it will uh, when uh, when you add uh, when you call wait, it will add it to uh, the wait set, uh, your particular thread, and uh, so the notify notify all will remove the thread from uh, that wait set, and uh, it will if it's uh, currently in wait state, and then um, you know for the the caller method that actually calls this. Uh, um, that is created this thread um, with that that calling uh, caller uh, method. If it uh, uh, said calls the interrupt, then it will uh, uh, it will uh, throw the um, illegal uh, you know uh, monitor state exception. And also uh, one more thing is uh, when uh, when you uh, call wait, it has to have the lock. I mean within a synchronized uh, block or uh, uh, only then you can uh, you can have uh, the wait executed the wait method executed. I'll settle through a uh, illegal monitor state exception. So in the, then we have uh, notify and notify all. So here um, you uh, it's similar like when you call uh, notify it'll it'll select a particular thread from the wait set. So it doesn't have any uh, priority. It'll just pick up any thread and uh, from the wait set and it'll um, then it will release the lock. Um, the current thread, and then it will uh, the um, the thread that has been uh, um, that has been uh, removed from the wait set. It can uh, acquire the lock, and it will it can uh, resume uh, execution. Um, so, however, if uh, if you call notify without uh, when it's not in a wait uh, when it's not inside a synchronized block, if you call notify, then it will throw again a illegal uh, monitor state exception similar to wait. So it will uh, it will check if the current it, it maintains a count of uh, uh, the uh, the locks the number of time uh, a lock has been called uh, has been set uh, from different threads uh, so uh, each object has maintains uh, this variable so if it's set to zero that's when it means that there is no lock on the object so it has to be one or more then it will not throw an exception. Uh, So then, uh, similarly, notify all as well. Uh, it'll uh, notify all will just remove all the threads that are uh, in the wait set, and uh, one of the threads uh, will uh, can pick it uh, can pick up the lock uh, and start execution. So interruptions is uh, uh, when uh, thread dot interrupt you call, uh, or you can call uh, thread thread group dot interrupt, and uh, this interrupt. Uh, Will will cause the particular thread on which it is called. It will it will cause that uh, um, to resume execution, but it will throw the exception uh, in interrupted exception, but it will execute. Um, so what is a data race? Uh, does anybody like? Uh, I'm sure everybody knows. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yes. So when, uh, like he said, when uh, when there are two threads trying to, uh, uh, you know, when it's actually when one thread is uh, reading, um, uh, you know, uh, is uh, reading and the other thread is writing. So in this case, uh, um, it's it's like uh, you want ideally uh, you'll uh, if your code requires you to read an updated value, but. Uh, in this case, uh, the write happens after the read. So in this case, it's not reading the updated value, right? Because um, you want the updated value to have the latest value, but the write is happening after the read. So the read is a stale read. So that that's where uh, a data race happens. And uh, so, for example, uh, I have uh, this table. Uh, it has uh, uh, like thread one and thread two, and uh, those uh, there are two lines uh, in the in the thread. So in the in both of the threads. So in uh, thread one you have uh, 
R2 equal to A. So all of these are variables, R1, R2, A and B, and uh, A and B set to zero. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see what happens if, uh, uh, if this executes. So here R1 is uh, setting the value, R2 is setting the value to A, and uh, R1 is setting the value to B. So, uh, and then in the next line, uh, B, B is uh, set to one and A is set to two. So here in this case, um, values will be uh, zero, zero, right? Because uh, um, A is, uh, you know, A is still equal to one in the first line. A is not updated. In the second line is where the line, the value is being updated. Uh, so it still show, it will show zero, zero. But uh, if you execute this, uh, you know, in some cases, it will uh, give you the value R2 equal to one and R1 equal to one. That's because the compiler can uh, rearrange the code uh, like this, where uh, the, um, you know, line two is made to line one. So the previous, uh, what was there, uh, line one is now made line two and line two is made line one. So in this case, uh, it updates uh, the value for, uh, for B and uh, R1 uh, reads the value of B, so it reads one, and uh, A is updated to two, and R2 uh, reads the value of A, so R2 will get two. So, uh, so this is what happens uh, with the data race. So when there is a write uh, in one thread and a read of the same variable in the other thread, the, uh, and uh, read and write are not synchronized. So I'll, I'll just show you, uh, blocking queue demo. I just have the code, I don't have uh, uh, the, I can't execute it, so I'll just walk through this. So um, I'm just creating a simple uh, blocking queue with, uh, you know, linked list um, as a member variable. And uh, so I'm setting the capacity in the constructor here. Uh, and, um, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'll increase the size. I don't know if you can see it. I am not able to increase the size. So, uh, uh, so first I'm just uh, um, setting the capacity. So in this case, uh, let's assume like I'm setting, uh, you know, whatever five is a capacity. And uh, what does blocking queue do? It, it, you have a producer and a consumer and uh, um, the consumer waits till there are values uh, for it to consume. And the producer, uh, it waits till uh, if there's no place for it to add into the, into the queue. So that is blocking for the producer and the consumer is blocked till it has any elements to read. So in this case, uh, yeah, in this case, uh, so uh, the put uh, put is the method that I'm using to uh, add values into the queue. So first I check, uh, it's a synchronized method. I check first if uh, it has uh, uh, any, uh, if the size uh, is of the queue is uh, equal to the capacity. So if it's equal to capacity, it should uh, block, right? Because it's a blocking queue. So uh, uh, I'm waiting for it uh, in that. Uh, in a while loop, it, sh it should be a while loop because uh, you, you, uh, that particular queue, have, that particular thread that executing it uh, will have to uh, uh, wait till it becomes free, right? So I'm uh, I'm waiting on that uh, on a while loop, and uh, so then you have uh, then if it's not then if it's not uh, equal to the capacity, I just uh, read the I add the element into the queue, and uh, similarly I have uh, uh, the. Uh, the take, the take or uh, the read. Uh, so the con the consumer uses this to uh, read elements from the queue. So it takes a particular element. Uh, in this case also it will, uh, a similar while loop I have and I wait on it uh, till it's, uh, if it's empty, I wait till there's an element uh, in the queue, right? So um, it's similar. So then I just add, uh, uh, you know, I have a main method. I'm uh, just adding five elements and then reading it uh, and uh, I start, the, the, I'm creating two threads, um, a producer and consumer, and then I do start. So can't run it and show, but uh, uh, so it will, it will, it will work. Uh, I tried this out, but uh, what do you think is the problem with this code? Like, uh, you know, what is what? Uh, what can be a problem with this? 
like it's it's properly functioning but what can be a possible scenario like if you add a bigger picture with more threads in it well uh, yeah um because of the weight because of the while loop okay yeah that's one thing other than that correct yeah and that's one of the main uh, issues actually so uh the thing is when when you have a, like i said there's a weight set and uh, all this uh, threads will be added to the weight set of uh, this class which is a blocking queue and uh, so when uh, when i'm doing a notify right i i call notify both in uh, the producer and the consumer when i'm doing get and uh, uh, put i'm uh, i'm doing the notify uh, right so notify will uh, cause one other thread uh, to start execution idly if it's uh, if it's a uh, uh you know if it's uh, if a producer is adding if it's the queue is empty and a producer is adding a element uh, the first element then the consumer can pick up the element so it should unblock the consumer but uh, if there are two producers and uh, uh, you know and one consumer and uh, you have this uh, one producer that says okay it notifies uh, saying that okay the consumer can pick up but however there's another producer as well in the wait uh, set so that can also pick up the uh, you know that can start execution so what happens will, uh, is that when it starts execution again it will see that uh, uh, you know uh, it it need not it doesn't do anything obviously because uh, it it either adds an element or it uh, it does not remove it but still we want the consumer to be picked up not the producer to be to uh, uh, execute so this is a problem here where uh, um, you know you you cannot uh, ensure that uh, that particular thread in this case uh, we want it like uh, you know producer consumer is like a pipeline right you have a, a pipeline of uh, elements being added into the uh, blocking queue and elements being read but in this case uh, you uh, there's no way uh, to determine which is order will the producer uh, always be picked up or will it be producer consumer then again producer consumer will it be like that so uh, other thing uh, with uh, with this uh, code is that uh, um, if uh, Uh, it can lead to uh, starvation starvation is where uh, when uh, one thread is uh, you know uh, if there are like hundreds of threads uh, in your wait set so uh, few of the threads uh, may not be picked up because it's picked up at random you never know uh, when that particular thread will be assigned there's no sort of ordering or a queue of when the thread is picked up so the probability of the starvation is uh, in this case uh, i mean in small applications you, you don't get starvation because this is norm like i tried to with uh, you know multiple queues and uh, multiple threads it never uh, face this problem so you likely face this problem on uh, you know like when you have 100 or more threads uh that's uh, that are executing so that idly you will not even have on uh, normal systems it will be only with like uh, zeon uh, or uh, other cpus that you have uh, where on big data that you run so many threads you never run so many thread at once so even uh, running threads also multiple threads is uh, uh, detrimental uh, because uh, even uh, managing threads also will actually eat up into your resources uh, than actually helping you uh, you know helping the uh, execution like uh, reducing the time of execution so management also is you need to take care of you cannot have too many threads depending on the number of cores idly you will have that many threads so uh, so the one way to uh, avoid this is uh, you can use uh, uh, you can use uh, reentrant uh, uh, locks so uh, this uh, will and this reentrant lock will ensure that uh, um, the cure, there is uh, no starvation it uh, it has a fairness principle uh, that will that what's priority 
yeah, priorities also you can use. You can you can set the priority, and uh, I've not tried that, but. Uh, that you, that you'll need to take care of, like setting the priority for each queue and uh, I mean for each thread. But uh, if you don't want to go to that uh, detail and allow the yeah allow uh, your application itself, your JVM to take care of uh, you know which uh, thread is uh, next in queue, like it'll based on the which is executed, which is first uh, uh, does a wait. So it'll it'll call that that particular in order orderly fashion. So. I don't know what is happening here. Fine, I'll I'll just uh, uh, I can, I'll put the code everything on uh, uh, GitHub and you can see. How do I put this on now? Okay, yeah, just make it uh, duplicate. Don't don't want of. Uh, okay, one second. One second. No, not now. Yeah. So. Uh, so here uh, you uh, use the reentrant lock, and then uh, so I have uh, two uh, conditions: not full and not empty. All right. So what this does is uh, um, I have uh, two conditions on which I can uh, wait. Uh, so I'll, I'll for the producer I'll wait on something called uh, uh, not full, and uh, on the uh, on the consumer I'll wait on uh, not uh, not empty. Right. So uh, for example, when I do a put. Uh, um, in this case, I first call lock. So um, this is what uh, the synchronized also, it's, a, it's the same thing. So the lock and unlock where I'm doing here is, uh, uh, will be the final uh, synchronized block for me. So within this, uh, the entire code is uh, synchronized here. And uh, I do uh, uh, wait on not full. So that means uh, when, it's, uh, uh, when it's not full, um, so uh, it's, it's like, uh, So when uh, when I'm doing a put, I'll I'll see that uh, uh, you know I I signal for the not uh, um, so the take or the get will signal uh, not full, saying that uh, uh, it's not full. Uh, so any uh, anybody uh, any thread that's waiting on the not full can pick it up. Similarly, uh, the producer will uh, signal not empty to say that uh, uh, to to say to a particular consumer saying it's not empty and you can pick up right. So. Uh, so the producer will tell uh, uh, you know the not full queue saying that uh, uh, so who's listening on the uh, not full the consumer is listening on the not full and it will signal that saying that uh, uh, you know it's not full you can pick it up so that's why i'm i am uh, uh, signaling here in the put uh, to the not empty here and uh, similarly in the take i'm signaling to the not full saying that uh, uh, you know uh, i'm not full you can uh, one of them can go pick up one of the uh, producers can pick up. So here I'm just saying uh, producer uh, can uh, resume execution in the take, and here I'm saying consumer can uh, resume execution. So I'm I'm actually specifying who should execute next. So in this way you can uh, you can also specify the ordering of your threads, uh, which should be executed next. And also apart from that, like I said, uh, the um, the reentrant lock has its own. Uh, uh, fairness principle, and it will ensure that uh, uh, any of the queues, I mean, any of the threads waiting on that uh, uh, in the wait set for it uh, will will be uh, uh, will be next resumed as as it was uh, added to the particular wait set in that order. Okay, next I'll uh, move to uh, fork join. So, uh, fork join uh, was. Uh, uh, it was designed uh, such that uh, with a uh, divide and conquer principle. And uh, so it uh, speeds up the execution by dividing tasks into smaller chunks and uh, executing them in parallel and then uh, obtaining the results uh, and uh, combining them again. And uh, this is a recursive uh, uh, procedure. And uh, 
the sub tags should be independent of each other and uh, uh, they should also be stateless um, so that uh, there is no uh, uh, you know any data race obviously you don't want that uh, and because it will it will call recursively uh, you don't know how uh, the state of the variable will change so uh, so in so the, there are two parts fork and join so in fork uh, it's uh, it's dividing uh, the task into smaller subtasks and uh, join is the, is where you uh, combine the results and uh, you wait for the result obviously and then you combine it is that that is where the join happens similar to map reduce um, so um, it you uh, the, how does it work uh, the fork join so it has a uh, it it uses a uh, thread pool and uh, um, if you you can uh, create your you can have use your own uh, um, factory uh, which you can specify when you create your uh, thread pool uh, your uh, uh, when you create a constructor you can pass in your own uh, um, for, uh, factory for it or you can use the available uh, um, factory uh, which is a uh, which I will show, uh, which is a common pool uh, uh, factory that uh, that creates the number of threads equal to the number of cores, and uh, so each thread uh, in this case uh, will uh, will be given a, a double-ended queue, and uh, so uh, in this case uh, it can be pick double-ended queues. It can be added and removed from both the ends. And uh, so here, uh, if a thread, uh, as there are multiple tasks, and these tasks are divided between these threads, and uh, these uh, tasks are added to the uh, to the um, DQ of each of these threads. And uh, when a particular uh, thread has no task, then it can go and it can steal uh, from another threads, uh, um, the, you know, the DQ. So that's a st work stealing algorithm that has been uh, implemented. Um, uh, into fork join framework and uh, so fork join framework has two main classes uh, fork join pool and fork join task uh, and uh, fork join to pool is uh, the uh, implementation of your executor service uh, uh, interface and uh, it has uh, the only difference is it has uh, the work stealing algorithm that is implemented um, the differentiation between uh, executor service so there's uh, so now uh, how do we uh, create a, a fork join pool so like i said you can use a common pool uh, that's a static method that uh, you can use and it will create number of uh, uh, threads equal to the number of uh, cores that are available and also uh, another advantage is that it uh, it's uh, it uh, recommissions those threads if it's if uh, if it completes uh, its execution and it's uh, then the threads are added back to the pool and then uh, it can be uh, you know reused for uh, uh, other purposes whenever like common pool is again used uh, so it can be reclaimed so that reduces the resource usage and uh, fork join task is used to execute your task uh, so similar to uh, you have uh, runnable and uh, callable so you can use uh, these two uh, uh, recursive action and recursive task, uh, which is a subclasses. So you have to extend uh, one of these two classes uh, for uh, running your uh, um, fork join method, like creating a task. So uh, when you create a recursive action, uh, you don't you don't get a return type similar to the runnable, and with the recursive task, you get a, a return value it's similar to callable, and uh, so for uh, with uh, with fork uh, join task uh, you have uh, two methods fork and join so fork is allows uh, fork join task to be scheduled for uh, asynchronous uh, execution um, so it it creates a it creates a thread um, or it it actually picks up uh, um, from the common pool and uh, it's uh, the task is assigned when you call fork um, so a new subtask is created uh, from the existing one so when uh, in the, from that particular thread it will uh, it will do a uh, it will assign this task to a, uh, to the parallel thread that it uh, invokes and uh, um, you get it from the common pool and join is where you, uh, you wait for the execution to complete so this uh, how do you split it uh, your task so 
if the problem is small you uh, split uh, if uh, you call uh, you follow this algorithm you uh, directly solve the problem if it's too small because it doesn't make sense to split it into um, further subtasks if it's too small like the end condition and uh, else you uh, split it into independent parts you uh, then solve fork each of those uh, new uh, subtasks uh, to solve each of the parts and uh, join all subtasks and uh, compose the result from the subtasks and then you can uh, return the result as well if if uh, need be so this is basically all uh, folk join uh, uh, um, all of the problems uh, will use this algorithm so uh, so here uh, uh, you can you can use uh, multiple methods uh, you can use execute or uh, you can use uh, join or you can use invoke so uh, uh, with uh, with execute um, you just you just call the uh, you know you create a recursive action uh, that is any task with the, that you extend from the recursive action um, cl class and uh, then you call the join or you can also do a submit the only difference between submit and execute is that it returns the uh, recursive action as well so then you can do a join uh, you know pipe pipe it and do a join uh, or you can do uh, invoke uh, there you can actually get a return uh, type so that is what is typically used uh, so uh, yeah i'll go to the code and i'll show you so i have uh, i've created a, uh, this uh, code where i'm having a uh, list um, and uh, this list I am uh, adding the elements of the list so um, this can be uh, uh, ideal uh, you know uh, ideal problem for uh, uh, divide and conquer right because they are stateless each each uh, uh, sub uh, problem I can add separately and then add the then the result of that I can add to the result of the next and I don't need to worry about uh, you know uh, any ordering or uh, any data race problem so in this case I have uh, created a uh, so I have a threshold of five. Um, so here uh, I'm just setting it for for now as five is uh, at which it should uh, execute sequentially. Above five, I will uh, execute it parallelly. Um, so I have this. Uh, um, so this is the uh, task. Um, the uh, some action is is my uh, task here, and. Uh, so for each uh, each of them, uh, you have to, it has you have to override the compute uh, method uh, for this. Uh, uh, for the for this task, the sum action, and uh, this is and also you need to store your uh, data in a member variable because uh, you cannot pass any arguments uh, to your uh, compute method. So I'm storing the data uh, in my uh, constructor, and uh, so then I'm uh, so in compute I'm checking first is the uh, similar to that algorithm. First is uh, I'm checking if there's a uh, if it's if if the basic condition if it if it's an exit condition for me here it is whether it's less than the threshold it's less than five elements I add uh, yeah, I add it sequentially uh, the five elements but if it's greater than five elements uh, then I will uh, divide it by two and. Uh, um, then each of this, uh, so this subtask I create uh, two subtasks. Uh, one is uh, from zero to mid, and then another subtask is from uh, from mid to the end of the list. So uh, then I I do a fork which will uh, which will add this uh, uh, task uh, and give it to a uh, you know uh, to the thread uh, from the common pool. And then I call compute. So this compute will just execute it in this current thread itself. So one I'm uh, giving it for the uh, for a thread, uh, parallel thread. Another I'm executing in this thread itself. So the compute will execute, and uh, I'm waiting for the join. Uh, I'm waiting for the result of the first thread. And uh, so once uh, I'm I'm obtaining the the result. So with this, this is how it uh, I can do the com uh, compute. And here you can see that uh, I'm in the uh, compute directly. This is just a sequential execution. I'm just for those five elements. I'm iterating and just adding it and returning the the value in that case. So uh, this is my main thread, and uh, here I'm just creating a uh, I'm creating a list, and uh, I'm calling this uh, action. Um, I'm creating a new uh, task of uh, some action. And uh, I'm passing it to the invoke. So here I'm uh, I'm using the um, pool as well here. So fork join pool, and uh, I'm passing this uh, 
task some action uh, to the invoke so in this here i'm using a recursive uh, action so i'll show you how you can use a uh, rec recursive task so recursive task is where uh, you can return a value so in this case uh, it's similar uh, it's uh, similar to the previous one except uh, that i can return the value here uh, so here i'm return i'm getting the return value here in this case i'm not getting a return value and uh, i'm uh, i'm executing this value and then uh, obtaining the result here so this uh, this uh, invoke will actually return me the result of this similar to the previous one so uh, i uh, ran this uh, this uh, particular uh, um, method i mean this particular uh, uh, example for uh, around uh, 1 million uh, or i gave it a 10 million list and uh, uh, i ran uh, multiple iterations uh, around uh, 10 iterations uh, for for different thresholds so first threshold for me here the threshold is my uh, sequential limit so 1000 uh, uh, i set for the, you know for the first time Uh, and then i increased uh, you know i made it 100000 and then 1 million so this is the threshold at which it it is the exit condition and it executes sequentially so i get the values of uh, 15 uh, 52.9 milliseconds and uh, when i did it 100000 i got uh, 20 28.4 milliseconds and when i did for 1 million i got uh, 31.8 milliseconds uh, so as i'm increasing the size you see it's uh, increasing here but Uh, surprisingly you see that i'm getting uh, in sequential and just normal code without using fork join i'm getting 18 uh, um, you know milliseconds so why is that after uh, you know uh, using the new the fork join still i'm uh, you know the execution seems faster in sequential why do you think context. sorry context context switching yeah that is one of the reason and also it's it's a pretty simple uh, uh, task your uh, addition rate right? it uh, um, it doesn't take so much time for the execution to occur so uh, there's no point in splitting it because uh, it's uh, like uh, the person said it's uh, context switching and also it takes uh, more time for management of your uh, threads um, rather than actual uh, execution of your program so that's why so it depends so uh, when when you have a more complex task you can use it but even in this case uh, you need to do multiple runs to see uh, uh, which is your ideal threshold see for 1000 i've got uh, 52 uh, milliseconds then for uh, 100000 i got 24 for 1 million i got 31 so you need to do uh, the, you know multiple runs to see which is your ideal uh, threshold that you want to set Uh, because it's a balance between uh, uh, between your uh, uh, you know uh, the thread management and uh, uh, so if you create multiple uh, subtasks i mean the uh, subtasks for your particular task it it can actually det be detrimental rather than uh, you know executing everything at once it has to be a big enough chunk in this case the sum is not a big enough chunk to execute in parallel it executes too fast so uh, you have to ensure that the chunk is big enough that's why your threshold should be more uh, when you execute it uh, I think that's it. I'm done for the. Any uh, any other questions? Yeah, translation uh, uh, list buffer. So that is more like uh, when uh, when you have a, uh, you have an intermediate uh, um, cache. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, that is a part of your. Uh, um cpu and uh, that is used by uh, multiple threads um can reuse that particular cache and that is uh, used for uh, when you uh, need to do any uh, uh, reads uh, which needs to go to your uh, uh, memory um, or even a ram or even your uh, particular uh, like i ideally it's even for your ram like uh, yeah, in memory as well you have this tlb in between that will uh, execute it faster so that uh, when you have multiple threads running you, it can actually reuse that because uh, some of those uh, data can be shared and uh, it's ideally like a cache right you reuse uh, existing data because uh, uh, you feel that the or the algorithm feels that it it can be reused the data so that's why you have this uh, tlb where you can reuse it okay uh, what is the context Okay. Spinning remember this they said that like when you wait for the thread 
that is a spinning. But spinning, some word here use spinning also. Okay. I'm not certain. It was uh, related with that uh, Java only, like. Uh, okay. Uh, in the school, they are saying like how you can reduce that time. Okay. Like the executor framework is there, then why we are still doing with the. No, this is the executor framework will not give you the this uh, divide and uh, conquer uh, uh, that you have, right? So that this that is not available in this. Uh, You can do that. See, the another thing is you have the uh, you have that work stealing algorithm that's not there uh, in uh, uh, in uh, executor service or executor framework. Yeah, you should try it out once <laughs> and uh, try it out and see. Yeah. Okay. So can you explain how that is happening actually? Okay. The, which lock did you use? Uh, Reentrant. Reentrant. Yeah, both doesn't have. Whereas intrinsic lock is directly translated to, to interaction. Okay. I'll take that offline. Okay. I'll I'll explain that. All right. Thank you. <laughs>